Hi everybody, welcome to the second part of the series on AWS IoT Fleetwise. If you haven't done so so far, please check out the first part where we talk about the introduction to the service. So the challenges that you might be facing with customers today, as well as how IoT Fleetwise might be able to help you there. The second part, we're going to now dive into the data types. So more the technical side of things and are going to have a look at how it's built up and how you are actually working with Fleetwise to build up the use cases you're interested in. Let's get started. First part are the architectural principles of AWS IoT Fleetwise. And we're separating here between the things that IoT Fleetwise actually is taking care of as well as what the customer is doing or should be doing afterwards. So let's get started with the first part here is the modeling part. So we see the vehicle engineer on the left in the diagram and the vehicle engineer is the one with the knowledge about how the in vehicle communication looks like. So we're modeling all the vehicle sensors as well as the ECUs in the vehicle catalog. So you can imagine the signal catalog containing all the signals for all the vehicles in your fleet. Second part is that you're defining decoding rules in the decoder manifest. This very much depends on the CANDBC file, which contains the information to decode the messages in the CAN bus or communicated over the CAN bus. Second one is selecting the right data. So this is the part that's taken over by the data engineer you're now defining collection campaigns for the data collection. So which kind of data under which circumstances are you interested in? Should this happen scheduled or should this happen conditional? This you can then apply to a whole fleet. So five vehicles, 20 vehicles, or perhaps a million. You can also apply this to part of a fleet as well as to individual vehicles itself. Let's have a look into the diagram here. So the second step was the data engineer submitting the campaign to this Fleetwise service. And then you see number three is where we're sending over the campaign to the agent on the device. And if we have a quick look onto the vehicle itself, we see the ECUs, which are communicating over the vehicle networks, which then hopefully make it able to AWS IoT Fleetwise for the agent to collect the data and send it back over. So this is step number three. We want to collect the data according to the data collection campaign, which is running on the vehicle, and then to the storage. So time stream or S3. And then we have the next step, which is number four. Number four is the step where actually Fleetwise doesn't play part anymore. The responsibility of Fleetwise ends with delivering the data to storage. This is where you build your systems on top of. So your applications, we talked last video about machine learning about applications like like ETL applications that you want to build on top of storage to gather the insights. And now it's your task to take the insights you're gaining from the data and go back to step number two. So do you need different data? This is where we're closing the data loop and choosing different data sets. But as I said, step number one to step number three is what Fleetwise helps you with. And step number four is your responsibility to build your systems on top. So this is more the general concept, the architectural principles of AWS IoT Fleetwise. And now we want to have a look at the different data types that AWS IoT Fleetwise is built on. We're starting with the signal catalog. Signal catalog, we just heard that before, is the definition of standardized signals that can be reused to create vehicle models. So 
one signal catalog containing all the signals according to VSS, the vehicle signal specification, within your AWS account. The second step would be the vehicle model, which is also called model manifest, which assigns a subset of signals to an individual vehicle model. The decoder manifest is that element where you leverage the CAN DBC file, where you communicate that individual encoding for the signals that are sent over the CAN bus on the vehicle itself. So for every vehicle signal, you need to have the decoding information within the CAN DBC file so that it can be encoded on the vehicle by the Fleetwise agent. So we're moving forward to the vehicle itself, which is the instance of a vehicle model. So Jane's EV vehicle type A, for example, built 2016, which is in her garage, would be an instance of the vehicle model. And of course, it needs to tie in the decoding information. So that's why we also leverage the decoder manifest as part of the vehicle itself. Next would be the campaign. So what we have till now is more or less a static definition of the fleets with the individual vehicles. And then campaign is that element that defines the data collection rules. So time-based collection or condition-based collection, which ties to a vehicle itself, also to the signal catalog. So which kind of signals are we collecting? Or it can also target a whole fleet where multiple vehicles, also heterogeneous vehicles, can be part of. And then we're specifying which signals you want to have or which are targeted for that entire fleet. So these are the individual data types. And this is all I wanted to discuss in this video, just to explain to you how the Fleetwise service can help you and how it looks like. In the next video, we're going to look at the CLI commands and actually build up the cloud side of Fleetwise step-by-step step, and you're invited to follow along. So thank you so much for joining today. I'm very excited that we got to talk about Fleetwise a little deeper and I'm also very excited to see you in the next video.